Um, lovely. So next uh, is Chitan. Chitan is um, going to tell us, uh, has a lot of experience with the exam, and um, he's going to he's going to tell us about, uh, if you could share your screen, Chitan, for us, please. And he's going to tell us uh, tips and tricks for the Viva components of the exam. Over to you, Chitan, 10 minutes. Uh, hi, uh, uh, hi, friends. Uh, I passed my exam in uh, November 2019. Um, about Viva, it's a uh, it has remained same as uh, pre-COVID and uh, now. Uh, so the, I'm presenting you 10 steps uh, about how to behave and how to present yourself in the Viva station. Uh, first, most important uh, tip is to maintain your body language uh, and yeah, face mask, of course, uh, and don't shake, uh, dress yourself uh, neutral, not too, too bashy or not too boring, so just like an interview or uh, uh, neutral colors, tie. I don't recommend bow tie. It might you don't look too odd in, in the in the in the in the hall. Don't don't handshake. Maintain eye contact. Sit up straight. Don't slouch. Uh, attentiveness uh, is important. Do, don't do uh, confusing head nodding. Say proper head nodding. Uh, at the end of the instruction or, or if you think that's appropriate. Uh, hand movements, don't do too much of hand movement. Uh, a gentle, uh, very mild hand movement uh, with your, uh, when you're conveying uh, answers, it can be helpful, but uh, don't do aggressive hand movements. Yeah, this is how you should sit uh, uh, with the hand under the table. Don't, don't, don't bend forward. Uh, it, sometimes some um, examiners take it, uh, don't like it to, you to go to their near to their face and talk. Did sit straight on your chair. Uh, listen carefully. The second tip is uh, listen carefully the question. Some of the questions you might have come across in courses like this. Uh, don't don't assume that that's the same that's the same scenario. So listen completely what they're saying. Uh, so if you don't know the answer. Uh, avoid guessing, uh, avoid, avoid uh, assuming things and avoid, uh, avoid telling things you already know. Just, just listen and think it's a, think the scenario as a whole. There are some minute details in the question, so try to concentrate on them. Uh, there is, it's very noisy in the, in the hall. Uh, sometimes some examiner, uh, you may not understand the accent, so hear carefully, concentrate on what they're saying. And you, while you're talking, be clear, be specific, be slow, and convey full message. Don't, don't, don't swallow the later half of the sentence and don't waffle. Tip three is uh, think about uh, while while they ask you a question and after uh, finishing a question, asking a question, take a few seconds and think what you're going, where you're going to start. Uh, at what level? So starting at the history level, starting at uh, uh, and where the starting point is, how you're going to uh, tell the introduction of your history part, where is going to be concentration more, uh, whether it's the history part or in the examination part or the management part. Structure your timings so that you deliver appropriate answer. Uh, it's in a logical sequence. And don't just jump into uh, surgery or jump, just jump into uh, evidence first. You know, evidence will fetch you uh, highest marks, but if you mention evidence in the starting, it won't give you any advantage. Uh, the tip four is uh, speak professionally. Uh, I know if they are, are smiling, some of them, uh, the most of them are mute. They won't tell you anything, but if they are smiling or, or encouraging you, don't, don't take it. Uh, in other way, you have to be professional, even though they are, uh, sometimes they can they smile and they, if they're nodding, they don't take it as a uh, other way. So you have to behave professionally, confident. Tip five is, uh, so what are the causes of uh, osteonecrosis of the femur head? So don't say numbers uh, because you will not reach the number, exact number. and. It doesn't uh, sound good if you say eight and just mention four and then start thinking. So don't commit to yourself by telling any numbers or any classification system. Uh, you can mention in the classification system, there are four, four classification. You, there you are allowed to mention numbers. 
but not in the in the in the causes and and treatment and all those uh, don't come into numbers if i is uh, uh, there are some answers which you are very strong uh, but try to uh, be not very obvious but uh, try to stay in your comfort zone don't mention which you don't know uh, how much uh, you, you might land in problems use buzzwords for every station there are sets of buzzwords uh, it's very important your marking depends on buzzwords uh, they are, have got a uh, sheet where uh, they have got buzzwords and they're they going to score you immediately as soon as you tell them. Uh, number eight is, uh, yeah, don't go to uh, diagnosis uh, abruptly. Uh, start with the history. It's a fair balance how much your time is spent in history and examination. Sometimes uh, we tend to spend too much time in history. Just, just balance yourself. Uh, if it's appropriate, uh, mention it. And don't mention everything. Uh, I would take history of travel, history of drug. If it's not appropriate, don't mention it. Uh, and always remember the differential diagnosis, tumor, infection, trauma is very important. It will be either of these. And, and don't question the examiner uh, and or, or be sarcastic or smile or inappropriately. Uh, so uh, be confident. Uh, Say that I would uh, ask this question to, uh, uh, I will ask this question, I will inquire about this, but don't ask, uh, does the patient have a history of uh, travel? Does this patient have a history of? So a patient get, uh, the examiner will be annoyed if you ask direct question to uh, examiner as if, uh, as if it's a station. He's, he's not personal patient to, uh, patient to the examiner. So examiner is, is reading what they are instructed to. So if you ask too many questions, the examiner say, that's what information I've got. Don't argue with the examiner. And final and most important uh, tip is don't panic. Uh, don't think about previous station. If you think the previous station has gone bad, uh, just forget it there because next stations are more important. Uh, it has happened to me. Uh, it will remain in your mind, uh, but try to concentrate on next. And there are there are point, there are stages where you get tired and you get fed up. Uh, but uh, those who have passed are the one who can forget the past and concentrate on future. Uh, I have, it has happened to me. First, a uh, few stations have done bad, and I was thinking about them. I was I was almost giving up. Then I forgot the, uh, forgot everything, and and I did well in the later half of the exam. So I. I when I look back now, so that's what matters. It's all state of your mind as well. And uh, best of luck for you guys. And uh, I'll stop my presentation there. That's brilliant, Chaitan. Really a golden tip, uh, 10 rules really for the exam. Uh, and I said that it's 80% about your technique, guys. Um, so focus on your technique. And I agree with you, Chaitan. I think... Um, one from me goes along what Chaitan said is see where each question is going. And my advice to you is each question, this is a surgical exam. So each question you get asked must end with an operation. Uh, and then the discussion about the operation or various aspects, everything must. So for example, supracondylar fracture, see where each question is going and go for it. Yeah. So uh, don't waste time on the basic principles. Each question, ha if you, in any question, don't end up discussing the surgical option of the treatment, it will probably be very difficult to, to, for examiner to pass you, yeah? So that's what you're trying to aim, and that's try to get through to that stage as soon as you can.